Just before 6 p.m. I picked up a lost cell phone while on a walk with Dustin. All of a sudden, the phone began to ring. Uh, hello? Oh, thank you. I've been searching for my phone. Is this yours? Oh, I'm glad you called. We can meet up and I can give it back to you. I'll be right there. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. You can call me Maggie. We agreed to meet up at 6 p.m. Dustin and I waited for the person to show up, but they never did. Hmm. So where is this phone you found now? I gave it to you yesterday. Huh? To me? Did that phone in my pocket? You mean this? You think it has anything to do with the murder? I don't really know, but if my eyes lit up. You were here all along? You're so mean! I called you a million times, but you wouldn't pick up! And when I went to check in the courtroom, everyone had already left! Now, oh, who the heck is this? Let me guess. You're supposed to know this score, too? Good morning, Maggie. Good morning to you, Maya. So, so, how's it going? Is it 
know one for worse than abysmal? Oh, what if I said that everything would be fine? That's right, it's my to rescue of the ultra decisive super important evidence! Nick, the thing you want me to bring. Huh? Uh, thanks. What the heck is this? A list? There's about 20 people's names and phone numbers written on it. So it's kind of tough, but I managed to dig up some dots. Looks like these guys are up to no good. No good? As in, there's a group of con artists the police are currently investigating. I think these guys are members of that group. Why would a group of cars pop up in a case like this? Don't look at me! Hmm. Where did you get this list from in the first place? What? Don't you remember, Nick? You're the one who asked me to look this up yesterday! Oh, is that right? The numbers were in the number of that phone Maggie found. Huh, so that's where that was. You're awfully forgetful these days, Nick. I hope I never get to be as forgetful old prune like you. Uh, Maya, actually, Mr. White is... Mr. White, recess is over now. Please bring the defendant and return to the courtroom immediately. Oh, oops. Guess you have to get going. We can talk about you being old later, Nick. Wish us luck! I guess I have all the pieces now. More or less. Oh, that's, that's just to put it all together. I'm not going to lose this. I can't. Come on, Nick. Better get a move on. Y yeah. <laughs> Court will now reconvene. Please call your next witness to stand, Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor. Before I do, if I may say a few words. What is it, Mr. Payne? It's about the next witness. He has a tendency to say things that will people in the wrong way, you see? So I asked that the court might be a little lenient on... There's no need to give a preference. So hurry up and call your witness, please. Yes, Your Honor. The prosecutor calls his next witness. A drifter who was taking a walk in the park on the day of the murder. I'd like to clarify a little something. Huh? Oh, alright. Go ahead. Just now, you introduced my wonderful self to the court, correct? Perhaps I was a drifter who was taking a walk. Did I? But I would not stand for that. Now you've tinted the court's eyes and colored me wrongly. So, I suppose calling me a universal would be a truth. This is good to settle everything in my life. I am no really looking for the perfect. I have a witch's selection process. Yes, yes, I understand. I'm very sorry. I will be more careful from now on. Who is he? The human shadow box? Ugh, I have to question him. Fashion, cars, women, glasses, and of course, university. First rates only need apply. Glasses? We all wear glasses. That's enough. Your name witness. want to play this? Using your power and influence to keep the young people down? I see how you feel now. You old people and your dirty tricks. You thought you had me, but you thought why? I'm sorry, it won't happen again. Oh, man. I forgive you. Alright, I suppose I can tell you my name. I am Richard Wellington, the drifter of Richardoso with a PhD in drifting, as it were. If you want to, you can call me a university student in transit. Mr. Wellington, on the day of the murder, you were taking a uh, stroll through the park, correct? It will appear that you are attached to that board. If you must, then by all means, I remind you that I am in no way a prepubescent boy out on a walk with mommy. If you must know, I'm... Anyway, please testify to the court where you saw during the walk in the park. See, you said it again, taking a walk. You know what you... What you witnessed would do, Mr. Wellington. I 
I was at the park all afternoon, deep in thought about my life situation. I don't remember the time all that well, but I do believe it was past 6 p.m. All of a sudden, a police officer falls from above right in front of my eyes. When I thought, I looked up and now I met the eyes of a charming young lady. Because I remember her sweet face, it was out of the pretty defendant there. The only thing I saw was the banana that fell with the police officer. That was certainly a decisive testimony. Decisive? Nick, did you hear what he just said? Yeah. That's all you have to say? How can you be so calm? It's strange. My mind is very calm and clear. Maybe it's because I believe in my clients? You mean Maggie? Yes. If he really is innocent, then that could only mean one thing. That guy is lying! You may now question the witness, Mr. White. I'll find out the truth, no matter how well you craft your lies. Mr. Wellington, I believe I have the bananas you saw right here. Ah, so you knew about the bananas too. Why didn't you say so earlier? I don't think you can use that as a way to pull more information out of me. And that's where you'd be wrong. Mr. White, what is the meaning of this? Isn't that the baseball glove? Huh? Wh wh what? A baseball glove? Does that look delicious? Care for a bite? Th that's... That's not... It's a... No! Your Honor, I think this proves one very important fact. The witness has bad eyesight. By the way, this how bad are your eyes? Huh? How? What? You... Why are you asking me about this all of a sudden? Objection! Your Honor, it is very simple to mistake a girl for a bunch of bananas. No, I don't think so. Objection over war. You're one of those people. Yes, you know what I mean. You're like, what about our A's, man? You're like those people who refuse to accept Galileo, which you used to your ward. So in the end, if we find out, we'll read from afar, I do think. And that is why I asked you how bad your eyesight is. Of course, true, Lanny 200. I suppose you're going to tell me that's terrible, right? Why are you not wearing your glasses today, then? Uh, that's because I lost them recently, you see? Of course, I was planning on getting a new pair made right away. You know, my glasses are ordinary glasses, so don't face them. How about when you witness the crime? Were you wearing your glasses then? Uh, how about it, witness? You are an unrelenting evil man! You're like those people who attacked Joan of Arc. She was brave and courageous. And why she didn't do anything wrong. It boils down to you are not wearing your glasses at the time. Therefore, the identity of the woman at the scene of the crime and that of the defendant cannot be proven to be the same by the, this witness! Objection! But the height difference was only 9 feet! It's very possible for him to see the face of the culprit standing on the upper path! Hmm. Witness, please be more accurate in your testimony. Remember, a person's life is at stake. Yes, Your Honor! Now then, please continue with your testimony. Please tell the court what happened next in the moments after you witnessed the crime. The girl on the upper path ran away as soon as he realized I was there. After that, I immediately called the police station to report the crime. It must have been 6.45 when I made the call. I must have a lot of free time on the head since they served within 10 minutes. 
Hmm. So the person who was on the upper path saw you and then ran away? Yes, that is correct. Which is why even someone without a superior brain like mine can understand that. That goes the murderer! You may question the witness now, Mr. White. Mr. Wellington, would you please take a look at this? You mean the victim's autopsy report? According to this, the murder occurred at 6.28 p.m. So what of it? You said you called the police immediately after the murder took place. However, by the time you had called the police, it was already 6.45. There's clearly a 50 minute gap here, do you deny it? Ah! I think this cult would like to hear what you were doing during this 15 minute gap. <sighs> the witness was in shock at the time after witnessing a terrible murder. It's only to be expected that he would be a little dazed. Objection! 15 minutes is hardly what I would call a little day. Ah! Mr. Wellington. Yes? Explain yourself. What were you doing during those 15 minutes? Answer the question! I... I... Telephone... Uh, I... I mean... Spit it out! I... I was searching for a phone booth! A phone booth? You mean you don't have a cell phone? You and your questions! As if you're trying to open all the layers of a... I don't know how to pronounce that. You must think you're really something special! Witness? I, I lost my cell phone! There! Are you happy? You lost it. Unbelievable! You lose your glasses and your cell phone? You must be very scared of when it comes to your belonging. What? Are you saying that first way people are never allowed to lose things? Haven't you ever heard that all geniuses survive the world? I see I don't think simple plain people. Enough! Oh man, oh man. Wait, hold on a second. He lost his cell phone? Nick, that cell phone. Could it be? With this phone Maggie found, there's no way. Boy, I didn't see this coming. What's I do now? Mr. Wellington, where's your cell phone right now? Getting our side back. He seems to be a little confused. I found my phone. I have you now. See, here it is. Oh, I see. Hmm. Looks like he got his phone. And I thought that just maybe that was his. Hmm. Okay. I think we cleared this as well. At the time of the murder, the witness did not have his cell phone because he had lost it. Therefore, the delay in his call was caused by his cell phone booth. Well, that's the gist of it. I guess you could put it that way and leave it that fact. Do you have any further questions, Mr. White? Your Honor, the witness's testimony does not make any sense. I don't believe that there was even a need for the witness to search for a phone. How dare you! Objection! You can't just make outrageous claims like that. You do have some, some sort of proof, don't you? Well, yeah, of course. This evidence should be good enough, I think. All right, let's have this proof then. Please present proof that the witness had no need to search for a public phone booth. Take that! It's quite simple, actually. Please take a look at this. That's a crime scene photo. Is there a problem with it? Oh, there's nothing wrong with the pixel. If you don't understand my logic after looking at it, something is wrong with you! Oh! It's... 
It's a phone booth? That is correct! All the defendant had to do was walk three steps! Mr. Wellington, why did you not use the phone that was right in front of you? <laughs> order! Order! <laughs> what does reporting the crime on their late food for the defense? Objection! The rumors can't explain what he was doing for those 15 minutes! There's reason to throw suspicion on his testimony! Yes! This is very true! What do you have to say for yourself, witness? But his phone really is his neck. He must have killed Dustin to get his phone back. Maggie said that she was going to return it to him. So there's no reason for him to kill for it. On top of that, we still have the phones he found anyway. Maybe he wasn't looking for a cell phone. Maybe he was looking for something else. Was he? So right. Yes, Your Honor. I thought you'd like to share the court. You would think the witness was doing it in 15 minutes. There's only one possible explanation. Alright, let's hear your explanation. However, if the one that you explanation is not persuasive, you will be penalized. Will you present Mr. White? Yes, Your Honor. Hmm. I probably should have said there was only one possibility. Please present to the court the only one of the answer that will answer the phone. Why didn't the witness call the police right away? Take that! Mr. Wellington! What? Don't do that! You almost gave me a heart attack! These are your glasses, aren't they? Well, where did you find? Ah! I believe the court all heard you just confessed to. These, that these glasses are in fact yours! I tell you where they were found, Mr. Wellington. These glasses were found under the victim's body. Uh, under the victim's body? Order, order. I think the answer is quite clear here. As he fell, Dustin Prince grabbed the corporate's glasses. The corporate knew that he had to find his glasses and search frantically for them. But he didn't realize that they were under the victim's body. And that is why it took him 15 minutes to make the call. <laughs> Mr. White, are you... Are you indicating the witness as the real murderer? Of course! That's precisely what I'm, I'm doing! <laughs> I know I'm right! He is the real model! You figured out, Nick? More or less. Turns out this stuff is the easiest case after all. Anyway, now's our chance to deep fix this guy! I'll sink him in one side! Yeah! So exciting watching you walk again. Somehow, my old self is coming back to me. It's time to sink or swim. Everything west on the edge of a knife. This is the moment I've been waiting for. Order! Order! Your Honor! The defense! The defense is making a mockery of this court! Without any solid ground to stand on, he accuses the witness of being the murderer! Yeah! That's right! No criminal! This third great part of a lawyer! In that case, why don't we look at this from a different perspective? Let's hear your explanation as to why you are not the murderer! What? That's. that's easy! Uh, uh, for example, that's. Uh, the name of the victim was. What about that? Are you reading the name Maggie? Yeah, you didn't read it like you can read that, right? But we already know that this was not written by the victim himself. After all, the defendant's name is Maggie. M-A-G-G-E-Y. And the victim was left handed. In other words, in order to make the defendant the, the guilty, 
the wolf that will use the fist of blood hand to write her name on the brow. But, 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 but that means that the wolf that was someone to defend it knew. Otherwise, how would that person know her name was Maggie or uh, M A G T E Y Maggie? Good point. I just didn't even know of Miss Bird before the trial. Ah, I forgot. Is there any way this could be a gun back to the evil hand? It would be best if I could prove that the witness had a chance to learn. That the fan's name was Maggie. Now, whether the fan's please present its case, how could the witness have done to defend the thing? Wellington, you didn't have the self for Rick on that day, the model craft. So what if I didn't? When you realized you had lost them, what did you do? What did I do? Did you try to find it by calling it? Why are you? How did you? Your Honor, these questions have nothing to do with... Over war. Mr. White, where are you going with this line of questioning? There's something relation between the witness self and the murder? I do, Your Honor. On that day of the murder, Maggie Bird picked up a lost phone in the park. And... She also received a phone call from the owner of the phone! Uh, hello? Oh, thank you. I've been searching for my phone. Is this yours? I'm glad you called. We can meet up and I can give this back. I'll be right there. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. You can call me Maggie. That was when you learned that her name was Maggie. <laughs> you made one fatal mistake. Fatal mistake? I can't say this at Maggie spelled E-Y. But the name that was written on the now ground was Maggie I.E. <laughs> this is that the only could have knew what her name sounded like. <laughs> order, order. But your order, the witness has no motive. And your point is, it's very simple, your order. A person usually would not kill someone without a reason. Mr. Wellington had no reason to kill anyone. This is incorrect! I don't have a motive! Hmm. So right, Your Honor, can you explain what motive this witness could have had? It's very simple, Your Honor. Are you sure, Nick? I said I can't offer an explanation, then the trial's over, right? Yeah, but... Now then, please present to this court proof that the witness had a motive. Take that! Mr. Wellington's motive is right here. What is this? A list? These phone numbers were pulled from the memory of the phone the defendant found. And we have determined that the people on the list are the members of a certain group. You... You looked up all those numbers? Of course! This is the phone number to certain the cell phone's memory. And these are numbers belong to people who are members of a certain con artist group. What? Con artist! Can you explain why these numbers were on your phone, Mr. Wellington? This... This is an outrage! Invasion of privacy! Looking up the phone numbers on a person's phone as a worst crime to murder! You're one of those people! It's like the cops who made this very honest! They should have seen this at once! I don't care, Mr. Wellington! All I want is for you to tell us what this is about! We think you! like to be a refined man such as me? <laughs> Your Honor, this is, this is a testified badge of the witness! Jackson over war! Mr. White, what is the meaning of this? Why would the witness have the numbers of a group of corners on his phone? Isn't that obvious the witness is? A member of the group. Mr. Watson is a member of this very group. No! Oh, 
All your friends' phone numbers are stored right here on this phone. If anyone wants to look into those phone numbers, it'll be all over for you. That's why you had to kill. No, this is too much. Hmm, that doesn't make quite a bit of sense. Well, Mr. Wellington, would you care to explain? I, uh, I. I got you now. I, I, that, I, that police officer. Attention! Your Honor. What is it, Mr. Payne? Your Honor, this, this is unjustified badging of the witness. You said the exact same thing only a few seconds ago. Please. Please, let's think about the context of that phone call. Uh, hello? Oh, thank you. I've been searching for my phone. Is this yours? Well, I'm glad you called. We can meet up and I can give you this back. The defendant had already promised that he would return the phone. After that, all Mr. Wellington had to do was meet Mr. Bullard to get his phone back. Why then would he need to kill anyone? It is a valid point. What does the defense think about this? Outside the box! Yeah, I do think like that, Mr. Steve. Maybe that sniper saw something at the crime scene that made him commit murder. Thoughts, Mr. White? Well, I don't think Mr. Watson wants to pick up his phone in a very friendly manner. He was promised his phone, so why would he have been on front of the defendant? I think he must have seen something here and he didn't agree with it when he got there. Well then, Mr. White, but was it something that didn't agree with the witness? Take that! Well, Mr. White and saw was the victim. The victim? You mean Dustin Prince? Mr. Prince had gone on his date right after his shift was over. No time to change, he went to the box and wearing his police uniform. Oh! The boy that picked up my phone is with a policewoman. He could have known that was, they were going out so he could get the boy. He was afraid the policeman would ask if he could to the phone. I do anything suspicious, he might want to check on my phone. It is mine, but thought that they had already wanted to check on the phone. He went into a panic, is this what you're saying? Exactly. Officer Prince was murdered simply because he was in uniform! <laughs> Sir Payne, do you have any comments? I... Uh, I'm thinking... Hmm. It seems the truth has come out at last. The witness, Mr. Wellington, you are... What's that supposed to mean? The evidence! The evidence! Uh, the evidence. Uh, the evidence. Uh, the evidence. Uh, I even remember when I was talking about it, that suspicious cell phone! Suspicious cell phone! Number this, suspicious challenge with that! Not all of that phone! Who said say that phone is really mine? Who is your proof? Your evidence! You want proof that this phone is yours? <laughs> I didn't tell you earlier! That's when I lost, I've already found it! I have even the size idea who the phone in the hand belongs to! You can be sure it isn't mine, you simpleton! What?! <laughs> it feels good to see you squawk! There's a ball in our hands, it's found! Whose phone is it? on his phone. Nick, don't you remember? When you got that from Maggie, you wiped it off. I what? You said there was sand all over it, so... 
wiped it. I wiped it. But it's totally too. <laughs> Oh, so much fun watching Frederick track travel like he wants to make himself. He's made a complete recovery. How many times do I have to say this? My friend is right here, you see? Oh, and it's Stanley. You can't take the number of on this phone. He must have glitched because all the numbers just magically disappeared. Joking. Here is all the numbers I was going to use as evidence. Mr. Wellington. What's this? By the turn of your voice, it sounds like you still have some fight left in you. Where did you find did you find yourself from? <laughs> oh, you're too much. And of course you have no idea what I'm talking about. I, oh my god, now I remember! Huh? Looks like they hung up. Ah, good. I finally found it. So that's what. Wrong, Mr. Tony. Why the hot glow in your eyes? Nick, you look so hot to get this small, but you don't remember something quick he's going to get us scot free. I know. I know this one has to be his. How am I supposed to prove something like that? Mr. White, you cannot prove who the owner of that cell phone is. The indictment has no basis, and therefore no power. Looks like you came up with a penny short. Where? Did I go wrong? Don't blame yourself, you're really a third-rate liar. You only made one big mistake. Who are you? What are you? That's something you haven't figured out for yourself yet. Who I am? The court hereby concludes the cross-examination. <laughs> that will be all. I have to bid you gentlemen and ladies goodbye. I have a reservation at that ultra fancy restaurant on the upper side of town. Thank you for your assistance. You've had a stressful day, so please, bon appetit. What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to just let it go at that? Hold it! Please wait, your honor! Oh, right neck! I think I may be able to prove it. Prove it? Prove what, Mr. White? Everything! Attention! Your honor! Cross examination has already ended! Besides, the fence is going to bounce to the witness before answering questions. You are not harass the witness. Is that clear, Mr. White? You hear that? No harassment allowed, Mr. Attorney. Please, Your Honor. Very well. This is your last chance, Mr. White. You may present one piece of evidence to the court. You get one shot at this. You cannot prove everything. It's over. For your client and for you. Do you fully understand? Yes, Your Honor. I'm sure you are well aware, Your Honor. The cross examination period has ended. Were you paying attention, Mr. Payne? I think that Mr. Wright can present only one more piece of evidence. Oh. Now then, Mr. Wright, this is your last chance. I'll come down to this. It's go time. Please present the one piece of evidence that will explain everything. Thank you, how nice! Here, please have one of mine! Wait, what am I doing? This isn't time to be exchanging business cards! Your Honor, there's something very important about that card, and that is... The card is important because of what is on the back! No phone number on the back, but but that's exactly it. Can you please call this number from your cell phone? Huh? What now? But court is still in session. 
Okay, you'll see. Okay, if you say so. Is it a fence repairing something, Mr. White? You're going to call my cell phone now. And then the court will see everything for what it is. Uh, of all the idiotic stupid things, too. What? Where's my phone? It was with this stupid sounding ringtone! Mr. Wellington. Hmm, how strange. I can almost swear that you're holding my phone! Y you ah! No, 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 I can't! By the way, if I forget, thank you very much for the lump on my head this morning. Uh, I don't think I need to explain any further except to say... When you were to retrieve your cell phone, you mistakenly took the wrong one! Defendant Maggie Bud, not guilty. <laughs> that is all. This court is adjourned. I knew that the will you were signed through eventually. I'm so moved by what you've done for me, sir. Thank you so much, Mr. Wright. So put it back in this. I didn't do anything to dissolve this. It's probably because of me. Huh? My whole life has been nothing but a moment of bad luck and failure. My whole life? It can't be that bad, can it? Since I was six months old, when I fell from the ninth floor of my apartment building, what? I've been hit by all sorts of vehicles, gone sick of all sorts of food. I've every test I've ever taken, I've been to every kind of disaster. I never want to even tie down a game of tic-tac-toe. My life has really been nothing but a string of disasters. That is, uh, pretty bad. Since I went to college, I was known as a goddess of misfortune. Yeah, but everyone calls me Lady Luckless. Lady Luckless? The twist is that my wish sports always seem to slide down to those around me. What do you mean? I see someone in trouble, I always try to help. That's right, we were talking about this earlier. It happened again recently too, Sean. There was an old lady facing back and forth by the police. That's a crosswalk. I gave up my hand and I knew it. We were having dinner at my house. Oh. I'm sorry that Justin's gone because of me. That's not true. I'd love to eat and have any sort of special meeting. It was just a pleasant safe thing to become one of my night shifts. Oh, I see. Everything is all my fault. Justin's death. The head being all messed up. Uh, well, I don't think my head is that messed up yet. I'm going to find a new life for myself, starting now. Next time we meet, I'm sure I'll... I'm sure I'll have found a whole ocean's worth of good luck by then, sir. Yeah, after all, goddess of misfortune is only a name. You bet! I'm gonna make it! I promise! 
Next time we meet, I want to be an unlucky puss instead of a goddess. Yeah, that's the spirit. Well, Mr. So, uh, I, Maya, I should get going. Okay, good luck to you. Thanks, you take care of yourself too. What a whole day. Got my memory back, things are still a little fuzzy. You're okay, and that's what counts. You really had me worried. Come on, let's go back to the office. I'm going to ask where he'll go. So this might sound bad, but uh, who are you? What? I thought you said you got your memory back. At that moment, everything really did come back to me. Detective Gumshoe. He still had had classes with the past on certain cases. He's also been a good ally to our mothers. The judge. He's a lovable, kind old man who is easily shared by other people's opinions. But in the end, he always comes up with the white blood act. This person. I haven't got a clue. He seems to know me, but. Mistaking me for someone else. And the score. Maya. You. You finally remembered. This is Maya Faye. My assistant. That's right. I have so many unforgettable memories about her. For example. Off to Nick. What's wrong? You keep staring at me. Don't tell me you missed me. Well. Yeah, I suppose I have. I feel like I haven't seen you in ages. Oh? Well, I'm back now. So it's time for us to create new memories together. Alright. Sounds good. All the phone numbers on my phone were erased by Mr. Wellington. I guess I have to start over from the very beginning. Come on, Nick. Let's get to our usual burger joint. Okay, okay. Actually, I haven't even been that long since he came back into my life. That story. That story began on one rainy afternoon two months ago. <laughs>